Let's talk about clipping masks. Clipping masks are a fun way to create unique variety in a design. You are required to create clipping masks in Art 1280, both during a skills practice assignment that you'll complete during this lesson, but also as you begin to work on your major creative projects, several of the projects require a clipping mask to be included. That means you can apply a clipping mask to text, you can apply it to a shape, you can even apply a clipping mask that allows adjustments, like adjustment layers, to be applied in just a certain area of an image. Before we get started, let's review some basics of clipping masks. A clipping mask is when you force one layer or one image to be inside of another. Key terms that you need to be aware of are base layer, that's the layer that defines the parameters of the clipping mask. In the example on this slide, the word travel is a type layer, and that layer is constraining the shape of the clipping mask. When you make a clipping mask, you clip or you limit which areas of other layers are visible. You make them temporarily invisible. You should memorize the key command, Command Option G or Control Alt G. This key command will allow you to create and release clipping masks. It's also important to remember that all the layers within your clipping mask remain fully and independently editable. It's almost like a layer group, except for all the layers in the layer group are being forced inside of whatever the bottommost layer is. So let's jump over to Photoshop and let's make a clipping mask together. I am going to make a clipping mask of the word Utah. So I need some pictures of Utah. So I have opened up the original images from Open Graphic Arts and I'm going, I guess I have, oh, that's not supposed to be there. Um, I'm going to merge them all into one document. To do this, you can use Command or Control A to select all in one document and Command or Control C to copy it. Choose one of your images to be your base image and then paste the other images inside. Two of my images are in horizontal orientation, so I should expect to have some, some issues when I paste them, but we'll address them as they occur. So Command or Control A to uh, select all, Command or Control C to copy, and then when I get to my final document here, I'll do Command or Control V to paste. I'm going to leave the image like this, and copy and paste all of the images together first. Before I go any further, I don't want to modify these pictures until I know where they're going to land inside the layer mask. I'm sorry, inside the clipping mask. So I need to create the shape that the objects will be clipped within. It can be a shape or it can be text. In this case, I will type the word Utah I will make it really big. I'll change the typeface. It does not matter what color my lettering is because the colors of the letter are going to be replaced with the images. And so now that I can kind of see that I have Utah and I have four pictures, I want to resize the pictures so they'll fit within the letters. Now. The base layer has to be at the bottom of the layers panel, but when I do that, I can't see the letters anymore. So I'm going to do Command or Control Z to undo. While I'm resizing my pictures, I'm going to leave them. Let's zoom in a little bit. I am going to leave them really big so that I can select a layer. Let's go with layer three and choose Edit, Free Transform. It gives me a bounding box around my image, which will allow me to scale and drag and scale and drag until my image is just the size that I want it to be for this letter. Then I can repeat that for layer two. Edit, free transform. In the newest version of Photoshop, you no longer have to hold shift to constrain the aspect ratio. If you hold shift, it will distort your image. So um, for those of you that are used to holding shift to constrain your aspect ratio in Adobe programs, it's gonna take some getting used to. And I'll place this approximately where I want it to go in this letter A. And then repeat that for the other two images. Edit Free Transform. These portrait ones should fit in the letters a little bit better. 
Because the picture behind the letter A is going to overlap the T, I'm going to move layer 1 to the top of the layers panel and then just try to make sure, edit free transform, that it's not overlapping the letter A in any way. And then we have one more, edit free transform, in my case layer 0, change the size of the picture. And then now that I'm happy with the size of the images, I might need to tweak it when I'm done to make sure the right part of the image is showing through. I can move the Utah layer below. Now I can't see the word Utah, but if I select all four of the layers that I want to clip and do Command Option G, it will clip into the very next layer. So you don't want to select all five layers. You want to select all the layers that will be clipped into the word Utah. Make sure that the word Utah, or whatever your word is, is the very next layer, and they will be clipped down into the layer. All the layers remain fully and independently editable. So if I select layer 3, we can toggle it on and off, it's this H over here. I can use the Move tool, and I can move the image back and forth until the part of the image that I want to see is in the letter H. Now it's overlapping the Bryce Canyon picture. So I can find that picture, move it to the top of the layers panel, and I can move that one over until I find the area that I want to, to show. Now it's overlapping the T. So we can move the T image to the top. I can move that image up and down, side to side, until I'm happy with the way that looks, and so on and so forth. Another great thing about clipping masks is that if you modify the base layer, your clipping mask will automatically modify. And so if I was to select the type tool and modify this, instead of saying Utah, it says both, the clipping mask, the images would stay put and you could change the words. Now if you have it set up so that one image fits, let's just retype Utah. Uh, one image fits in each letter, it might not work out so great, but you can do other things, like we could do Edit Transform Warp, like we learned about in the last video, and we could warp this text. Whoops, make sure you hit the right button. Edit Transform Warp. Now again, if your letters move, your characters of your word move, and the images don't move, you have to go back and modify. So I'd have to come through and kind of click and drag the images so that they fit in the letters. I'm going to undo that. Last, you can apply layer effects. So if we select the base layer and hit the FX button for effects at the bottom, we can add a stroke. We can change the color of the stroke. Maybe we want it to be like a burnt red color. We can increase the size of the stroke to our liking. You can even put the stroke on the inside of the letters or hovering half on the inside and half on the outside. Um, maybe you don't want a stroke, but you want to bevel and emboss. And so we can create a nice bevel on our shape and add a drop shadow. And maybe we want the drop shadow to be orange. There's a number of ways that you can modify. But what happens is that the clipping mask modifies um, and you don't have to go back and modify each individual character or image within the clipping mask.